Hi everybody, this is Irene aka Rini Draws again. And if someone asked me on my channel, how does one make money off of art? And I thought I would do a quick video and answer that. Um, this is the first video of this kind that I've done. Um, I've done a few others, they're all sort of videos of me working or tutorials and stuff. So I'm trying this out, you know, this is a completely new thing to me. So hopefully, you know, hopefully it turns out well. I will do my best. Um, so anyways, how do you make money off of art? That is a really big question, actually, because there are a lot of different industries of art. Nowadays, you also have animation, you have comics, you have concept art, you have graphic design, you have advertising. So actually, there are a lot of ways to make art, and there are a lot of industries within the category of art. But it's not, you know, I understand where the question is coming from, because it's not very clear to most young artists how to get into these industries, because I guess society as a whole still has a big mentality about, oh, starving artists. If you do art, you know, you can't, it's hard to make money or it's not a necessary thing like being a doctor or a lawyer. But, you know, it really is, is a mentality that doesn't make sense because why don't people assume the same thing about musicians or actors? Like, those are also typically non-essential, it's entertainment, but it's part of culture and people always want culture. So there are a lot of ways to make money off of art and there are definitely millions of people that make a living out of that industry. Um, it's just for some reason there's a lot of prejudice against it and it's not widely known to most people starting out how to get into these industries. So anyway, I primarily work in animation, comics, and gaming. Uh, I don't know as much about some industries such as fine art, but I'll do my best. So, step one for getting into any art industry is be good. That goes without saying, but art really isn't about, um, it's about self-promotion, it's a business, but you also have to have skill. Like, it's not just about going to school and getting a degree. Oh, if you have a degree, you'll be fine. You'll be, you'll just be coasting. It's kind of true for any job, you know, even if you're a lawyer or a doctor or, you know, um, I don't know, a CPA or you do taxes, like, it's not just, you don't just coast because you have a degree. And honestly, in art, a degree isn't the defining factor in whether or not you get work, but I might go back to that later. That's a whole different discussion. Um, you have to be good because your skill in the end is what will get you work. And you have to promote yourself and you have to have the right connections and make yourself visible. But if you make yourself visible and you don't have the work, and you don't have the work ethic and you're not good to work with, um, you don't have the right style, I guess, for what you're going for, then you're, you're still going to have a lot of trouble finding work. So, um, step one, be good, learn to draw, and um, I say start early, but it's never too late. Like, a lot of people um, I meet that are probably my age or older, they're like, I always want to get into art, but I didn't, you know, learn a lot about it growing up, and it's too late, I can never learn to draw. That's not true. You can, it's never too late to start. It's hard, it takes a lot of work, but you know, there's something about people that work really hard to learn to draw. Like there's there's this vision about, well, I really, you know, when you're starting out, everyone sucks, that's the thing. Like when I started out, I sucked. Everyone was really bad when they were beginner artists, but the thing is you see in your head what's possible. Like there's this thing I want to obtain. It takes a lot of work, but that's the first step is to work hard and learn how to make art. So art school. As to whether or not you should do art school, I would say it depends on where you're coming from. Um, I know a lot of people that actually are doing really well, at, like they're professional artists, and I work with some people that didn't go to art school or didn't finish it, but some people find that it was really helpful to go to art school. It kind of depends on whether or not you're in an area um, where you have a lot of early exposure to art. If art school would benefit you, then you should do it. I will say that graduating art school and having a diploma is not what will get you work. Like a lot of companies, you know, they, no one really asks for, at least in my, from my experience, what I do, like concept art or animation or comics, like especially in comics, no one will actually look to see if you have an art school diploma 
um, maybe if you're working for a more corporate company, like if you're doing, you, if you're working for like a movie studio, they will want you to be, have higher ed education. But in the end, if your work is amazing, if it's exactly what they want, it's not going to matter if you have a diploma. Like if you have a great work, work ethic and your work just blows them away. So um, if going to art school will help you get better and help you make the right connections and help you understand the industry, then you should do it. I personally did go to art school, but that's also because I was coming from overseas and knew nothing about like the American industry. I had work before I graduated. I don't personally think I needed to finish it, but I finished art school anyways because of my family. I have a lot of family members that, you know, are very insistent on the, on having an actual degree, and I know a lot of people's families are like that. But you know, kind of a word to people that think having a degree is is paramount and really necessary. If you're sure you're really going to be doing art for the rest of your life, it's really not. Um, it's it's expensive and it's not. It's not going to be a fallback or anything. It's kind of a kind of everyone's individual choice. Um, just be aware of what it costs and the fact that there are a lot of alternatives to art school, such as workshops and online resources for learning how to draw, um, learning programs. Nowadays, with how vast the internet is, you can learn how to use Photoshop, InDesign, After Effects, Flash through online courses, and it's all a matter of you making an effort. And even if you do go to art school, it whether or not you're successful coming out of it depends on you making an effort. So you have to actually try. Art is not easy. It's not something that you just, we artists enjoy what we do, but it's not something that you can just kind of go in and do, have fun and do what you want laissez-faire and everything will be fine and dandy. It takes a lot of work, but at the end of the day, I do think artists really enjoy their work and have a lot of passion for what they do, more so than probably the average person. Now, point two, that was a really long point one. Um, point two that I have on my list is build a client list. Now that you've gotten good at drawing or animating, I guess I primarily talked about drawing because I'm primarily, you know, to the illustrator, but whatever you do, you have to build a client list. And how you do that is by going to conventions, and there are conventions for pretty much all art industries that exist. And there are conventions for fancy art, such as Spectrum. There are a lot of conventions for concept art. There are also a lot of schools for concept art, such as the Concert Art Atelier in California, a lot of them are in LA. You can do some research about schools that specifically teach concept art that aren't like four-year colleges, but they're really geared towards pushing people into the concept art industry. Comic conventions, of course, that's the place to go if you want to get into comics. And actually, comic conventions are so big and numerous that no matter what art industry you're in, it's really good to go and meet other artists and make connections. If you go to most comic conventions that are sizable enough, you're going to have poster artists, you're going to have animators, you're going to have indie artists and indie illustrators, fantasy artists, as well as comic artists that work for, say, Marvel or DC. So it's just a really, usually most comic conventions are a big mashing pot of, like, artists and art industry people and it's very inspiring and you get a lot of editors and publishers also go there so it's a great place to make friends and you know keep up to date with what the industry is like and what people want conventions are always a good thing to go to and of course now with the internet you know you can get work on the internet and you can definitely make the right connections and if you you know know the right people to email and if you actively track down publishers or ask for work from people. You can build you can build your business just off of that. But it might take longer and you know face-to-face -face interaction with people is always better. And honestly, for artists that work freelance, going to convention going to conventions is a really inspiring boost, you know, as compared to working at home just on your own every day which makes a lot of freelance artists really hermetic, like me. So I find coming just really enjoyable, just for the sake of talking to other artists and catching up with friends, and it's a lot of fun. So I tell people that conventions are really important, and the answer I get from a lot of people is that they're too poor to travel to conventions. Well, here's the thing, there are 
comic convention in almost every state of the United States, at least. Um, I live in Texas, but even if you're like if you're coming from overseas, I don't know if this is so much true. And keep in mind, I'm primarily talking about like the American art industry, but at least within America, there are comic conventions everywhere. Like even if you're like in the middle of nowhere, I don't know if like if you're in Ohio or um, Kentucky, if there are any, if there's any such thing there, but I bet you there is something, even if it's really small. So, you know, if you have to do a bit of a drive within your state, do it, work a day job doing something else, save up and start going to conventions because it will help you. Um, and even if you can't, even if that takes a long time and that's hard for you and you really can't make it to conventions or get togethers and shows, have an online presence if you're talking to someone and you're asking for work. Nowadays, people will want to see your online portfolio. Most art jobs don't really go through like physical portfolios. I think for probably poster art or fine art and comics to an extent, there's still a big tradition that's alive of looking at actual art and a physical portfolio but having an online presence is very important nowadays. So make a website that's not just DeviantArt. It's nothing, nothing wrong with DeviantArt, but it's not a professional website. Um, I'm on DeviantArt, I'm on Tumblr, um, but it's not, it's a great way to network and connect with fans and get people to see your work, but it's not a polished website. And what I mean by that is something that's all you like the entire website the url is just yours not it's not you know some other website dot your name like my website is reenydraws.com so i'm my pen name is reeny reeny draws and i'm reeny draws across everything else but my main website is reenydraws.com so you need that one thing that is only your art it seems professional and it's always and it's also what people want to see when they're trying to hire you. Pardon the jump here, but I actually did the previous part of the video earlier today and I finished it, but I realized there's something that I wanted to add to this topic. So here I am again, slightly different setup, and I'm going to continue talking about how to make money with art. And what I wanted to add is I want to kind of go through different industries within modern day art and sort of talk about what you need to know, say what programs and what mediums you need to familiarize yourself with. And I think I'll start out with graphic design. Graphic design basically entails designing websites, doing some coding, logos, doing some advertising, and basically helping a company or your clients, usually their corporations, with their branding and all of their visual representation. And to do graphic design, you generally have to be familiar with programs like Adobe InDesign, Adobe Illustrator, of course, Photoshop. Photoshop is sort of, as of now, the industry standard for any kind of art, and it's good to learn that starting off because you will use it no matter what you're doing, whether it's graphic design, animation, concept art, or working for movies. No matter what you do, Photoshop is a very useful tool. So graphic design, you'll need to know most of the Adobe suite and also some coding. I'm not very familiar with graphic design. And here's the weird thing about art. A lot of people ask me to do graphic design. And it's strange because some people assume that if you're an artist, you know how to do everything across the board that has to do with art. And I get asked to do logos and websites a lot. but it's not what I do. I do comics and illustration, um, and I know like some basic coding, but I'm not a graphic designer or web designer by any stretch. Next, I'll go through fine art. If you want to do fine art, that's sort of the industry that most people generally think about when you say art, and that's the most traditional and oldest form of professional art. It's physically presenting a piece such as oil painting, watercolors, pastels, charcoals, something that people would say buy and put on their wall, put in a gallery. And to do fine art, the key 
after familiarizing yourself with all of these traditional mediums is to get in contact with galleries and actually get in contact with people that would buy your art. So look for art dealers, look for collectors, and again, talk to galleries. That seems to be the way to go. If you want to be an animator, generally you will want to find a studio that will hire you. Animators are always hired full time, even though if you work for a show, that might be a show to show thing. Animation is not always stable, but as long as the show is running, and at least for each season, you'll be at one studio. Put together an animation reel, again, make a nice website, present your work well, and find what studios are in your area or where you would want to work, talk to them, present your work, and they might have you do an animation test. If your style and your work fits what they need, then you can get hired. If you want to do concept art. Now, concept art is a very interesting animal. It depends on if you want to work for movie concepts or game concepts. Once again, the first step is to have a good portfolio, put your work out there. ArtStation right now is the most popular web website for putting your work up, and it's very concept art centric. There were some websites prior to ArtStation, such as ConceptArt.org and CG Hub. CG Hub is sadly no longer in existence. ConceptArt.org seems to be declining in popularity, but ArtStation right now is the way to go. It changes every few years, but there are a lot of large online websites where concept artists gather, and it's really these sites are a really good tool for getting seen, and usually they'll have job forums, they'll have ways of getting people to look at your stuff and find you. Now if you want to work in comics, that is the industry that I'm most familiar with because I majored in sequential art in college. If you want to work in comics, first of all the question is, do you want to work for a publisher? Do you want to work for the big two, which is DC and Marvel? Or would you like to actually do indie comics, which is sort of what I gravitate towards? The difference that that makes is whether you want to look into self-publishing and finding a printer and building your own website and web fan following, or if you want to go to a lot of conventions and get your portfolio reviewed by editors. If you're looking for work for a comics publishing company, say if you want to work on, say, Spider-Man or the Hulk, then the way to go is to do sample pages in the style that you know that company is looking for. Make sure storytelling is clear, make sure the drawings are solid, and make sure your pages aren't confusing. Submit your work to publishers, go to conventions, show people, talk to other artists and listen to their advice. Be open to critique because most of the time critique is not, people don't give critique just to bring you down and make you feel worse about yourself. In general, it's to help you and actually give good advice. Comic artists are generally very enthusiastic about their craft. Have a website, update your work a lot, go to conventions, get your portfolio reviewed, do sample pages. And a good book that I would recommend for learning to do comics, if you don't have the fortune of going to a school that teaches cartooning or sequential art, is Scott McCloud's Understanding Comics. He makes the entire process of telling a story clearly to reviewers and understanding how viewers and how readers perceive a page very easy and it's they're very entertaining books they're actually done in comics form so I actually can't remember all of the books that he's done he's done a few others other than understanding comics there are definitely some more resources out there but Scott McCloud's books are a good way to start out so that's about it hopefully that was informative hopefully that was helpful and I hope I answered the question for whoever left the comment on my channel. Once again, I'm Irene Strakowski, aka Rini Draws, and my website is rinidraws.com. That's R E N I E D R A W S. And you can find me as Rini Draws on Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, and DeviantArt. And I'd also like to mention I just opened a Society 6 store. So I'll put the link here. Click on it if you want to check it out. I have bleachy prints, I have really high quality products, I have iPhone and Galaxy cases, leggings, mugs, some postcards, all kinds of other products, and I'm going to be constantly adding to my product list as I make more art. So check it out, it's a really awesome new endeavor that I'm really excited about, 
and I've been wanting to open an online store in a long time. So I'm pretty proud of it. Hopefully everyone likes it. Hopefully that it's, it's successful. Thanks for watching again. Please let me know what you think. Like or subscribe. And I'll see you all till next time. Bye.